Well, hello, everybody. We have a small but mighty group today. Um, we had several more registered, um, but we'll, we'll hopefully they'll join on, but we'll go ahead and get started. And um, this will be great because this will be a very personal session for you guys, personal coaching question and answer session. Um, my name is Susie Pruder. I'm the executive director for the Southeastern Theater Conference. And these kind of video audition boot camps are kind of new. We just wanted to give people an opportunity one-on-one -on -one to um, ask questions and to um, uh, sort of, you know, be kind of coached through whatever it is that you have, have questions or concerns about. Um, I'd like to introduce um, Kevin Covert, who is the Director of Musical Theater at the Shenandoah Conservatory and uh, Shenandoah University. And um, Kevin did the first session for us and it was fantastic. Um, I think we learned more from that session as he did than the, um, than the participants because lots of great questions came up that we needed to get answers to, which we did. So hopefully um, we'll, we'll know more today than we did the last time. So um, welcome, um, Kevin. Hi, nice to see everyone. Um, hope everyone's having a good start to their week. I was saying to Susie earlier, I sort of felt like it was Friday. I had a, a week all in one day. Um, so I'm just going to basically go over some basic do's and don'ts. I see a lot of pre-screens and a lot of these kinds of videos uh, every year. And so there's some, some simple things that can really help you um, that I think are important. And then, of course, if you have any questions, you can open, uh, we'll open that up and you're, I'm happy to answer any questions or Susie can answer questions as they're SCTC related as well. So I'm going to give you some simple rules to follow when we're filming these videos. And the first one is follow the rules. Uh, I think SETC did a very good job on their website of laying out what they would like in the video, which is no slate, because you're going to have, you know, provide that information in, uh, in the application. Um, 60 seconds, first word starts, the timing starts there, the first word. Don't go over 60 seconds. That's a huge rule, right? It states very clearly that you'll be disqualified. I see it a lot at Shenandoah. We, you know, do common free screen requirements and it says 90 seconds. And if you go over the time, I'm not going to watch past the time. So, I mean, I think that's a super important rule. They're asking you to frame from your knees up, um, which is, might change a little bit, but for right now, I think I would go and do that. No karaoke tracks. I think that's very important because a lot of times, if you're using a karaoke track, there are background instrument, background vocals in it, a lot of instrumentation, we can't really hear the authentic cue. And then they've also given you specific ways in which to upload the video, which I think is very good. And ask for no commercial clips, which basically means if you played Millie in your production of Thoroughly Modern Millie, they don't want to see you doing gimme gimme, you know, in the big 11 o'clock number. Um, so I think following the rules is so important, you know, because as an organization, if I was an adjudicator, I would say, oh, this person can't follow basic, simple rules that are laid out. How are they going to be in a professional uh, setting? Um, I think specifically because you only have 60 seconds, you should do what you do best. What's the door that's easiest opened for you, right? If you're a singer and that's what you really, 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 you know, that's where your bread and butter is, then just, I would use my 60 seconds to sing. You know, if you're a really strong actor who sings a little, then use your 60 seconds for just a monologue. <clears throat> if you feel equal with both, that's gonna be a challenge for you because you have 60 seconds. So you gotta find that monologue that gets to the point very quickly. And then a really good 16, quick 16 bars, that's gonna show um, some sort of acting chops and your range, right? So I think do what you do best because you only have 60 seconds. And then you'll obviously be able to do other things in callbacks, whether they're virtual or in person. I think you also need to wear something that's flattering to you, but not too busy. When we are forced to like watch, you know, hundreds of videos a day, a lot of busy patterns, your eyes, my, my, my brain starts going everywhere. So if you're using a black backdrop, don't wear black, you know, I mean, some sort of a neutral backdrop and some sort of very nice clothing. And we got the question last week about girls and dresses and things like that. And I think you wear what you're, you feel makes you feel most comfortable, but it should be like you're going on a nice job interview. You know, don't wear your Metallica t-shirt with the holes in it, you know. So um, I think something flattering, but not too busy. This is so important. You would not believe the number of videos I get every year where the sound doesn't work. 
always double check what you're sending, right? Always, always, always. Do a sound check for yourself. Make sure, play it back. Make sure you sound good. The beauty of something like this is that you get to do it nine million times if you want until you get it right, right? It's not like the pressure of, you know, doing it in person. So why not take advantage of that? Just make sure that you are uh, sending something that can be heard. On that note, I don't think I would spend millions and millions of dollars doing it. I think you can get a really high quality, good sounding video on your iPhone or your um, whatever your device is. Um, someone suggested last week, which I thought was a great idea, would be if you are using taped accompaniment to either, when you're pressing play, make, make sure the accompani accompanist gives you five or 10 seconds after you hit play on your device before you start singing so that you can set yourself up or have a friend in the room to press play for you so that you can really be centered and ready to go. Because I think the most important thing in a 60 second audition is coming right out of the gates, right? You've gotta be connected to the material right from the beginning. You don't have the luxury really ever in an audition of revving up into it, right? So whatever is gonna get you to be prepared as soon as you hear that bell tone or that two or three bars of intro to get you, get you going. Um, ring lights to your friend in these sort of situations. I'm not using one right now, um, but they really do. A simple, very inexpensive ring light really does provide nice lighting when we're sort of doing these kinds of videoing. Um, I think those are my basic uh, good, great, good things, good sort of pieces of advice. Um, mainly the two big ones are follow the rules. Don't go over 60 seconds. And that includes, if, you're, so if your song is 58 seconds and there's something happens and your clip says you know, a minute and two seconds, they're probably not gonna watch it. It's gonna disqualify you. Make sure that the clip is no longer than 60 seconds total after it's edited. And um, uh, oh, I had something that just left my mind. Hmm. I'll think of it in a second, but I, I, there was something and it, it slipped my mind. So those are sort of my um, general rules and I'm happy to answer any questions you all have about that. Oh, I know what it was I was gonna say. I always tell my students in, in any sort of audition setting, you should leave them wanting more, right? Always leave them wanting more. So if I have 60 seconds, I normally encourage my students to find something around 48 or 50 seconds so that they have that 10 second leeway in case they do want to have a little bit more of an intro or if they're the, how they want to edit it, it's adding seconds on each side. So make sure you just sort of never push the envelope right up to 60 seconds, I would say as well. You're done. All right. Awesome. So I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has. Hi, Trinity. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, so I have a question. Um, so um, for some auditions that I have had to uh, turn in in the past, I have uh, edited on like iMovie and done like my little thing in the corner saying like my name and like what piece I'm doing if I'm doing multiple pieces um, and but not like slating it out loud because of the time restriction. Is that a no-no or is that a it doesn't matter. So you're you're um, asking if during your audition, your like name appears at the bottom or something. You're not yeah, saying it, but your name will appear. I don't yeah. do you know what the adjudicators will want for that. I don't know the answer to that. Originally, the idea was that not to have your name on there. Um, that okay. just gives you some more anonymity um, and makes the adjudication more fair across the board. So okay. um, I think the answer is no. And I don't, okay. and I wouldn't, I wouldn't also, I wouldn't put the piece that you're performing either because in my mind that feels distracting. Okay. okay. I think they Thank want to focus you. on you, Trinity. All right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> of course. Anything else? Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi. Oh, how are you? Oh, Jim first and then Sheik second. Hi, how are you? I'm well. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I'll be quick, Sheik. Don't worry. No worries. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm just sitting in because I've got a bunch. Of, I, I teach at Sewanee at the University of the South. Oh, and I've got students. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, and I've got, uh, usually it's just one or two. I've only been here a little while, but I've got a few students who are doing it this year. So I thought I would just sit in because so, I thought the coaching was such a good idea. Um, yeah, you're, you're basically re reiterating what I've said. All, all the information on the website is terrific. I guess my only question is, 
my students are doing monologues rather than, they're not really musical theater students this year. Any particular advice on, you know, what material is best for the particular crowd at an SETC audition? I mean, I can speak just for me in general, for someone who watches thousands and thousands of these a year. <laughs> um, I tend to always remember things that are quirky or funny, right? I mean, if, if you're doing a monologue about death or dying or, you know, somebody, you know, hurting you or something, there's a lot of those because especially young people love to feel the drama of it all. However, if you're doing a monologue about someone picking their nose or eating a dill pickle, like I remember the dill pickle girl from last year, you know what I mean? So I think it's in a, in a short situation like this, anything that's going to grab your attention and make you memorable. But that also has, I think in 60 seconds, we also have to remember that we still need a beginning, a middle, and an end, right? There's got to be some sort of discovery, some light bulb that goes off in the piece. And otherwise, you know, we're just sort of, nobody cares. So, I mean, things that, something that memorable to me is, is the most effective, in my opinion. I don't know, Susie, if you have an opinion about that. Yeah, definitely. I think um, uh, one of the things that came up last week was um, cl classical work, whether to do classical monologues. And I, I think the answer, it, I, you know, I asked the professional division and they said, um, if that is what shows off your talent best, absolutely. But the thing to keep in mind is that most of the companies you do do contemporary work. So, um, so contemporary is probably better. And I would, agree, you know, I, I don't know as much as Kevin knows, but I think, you know, something funny and light is, is helpful. And I think you also have to think about the companies are not only contemporary, but what kinds of contemporary work are they doing? And many of them are doing, you know, summer type theater, which in my mind means musicals, sure, sure. means light comedy, oh. means, you know. Neil Simon, all of that stuff. Right? Yeah. Um, and that's also a good point to tell your students and for you students, um, you would be surprised if you're, if you're choosing to do both and you've got you know, a 30 second monologue and you've got this piece of a song, don't sing a song that just trails off in the middle of a thought. Like really look at, at your 30 seconds and say, does this have a beginning, a middle and an end too? So you don't just sort of leave me hanging. You'd be surprised how people just sort of sing up until the time and then just stop wherever they are in the song. <laughs> so I'm always like, well, that's interesting. So make sure your, every, all your pieces have a beginning, a middle and an end. And, and I would add to that, having been in the room um, for auditions, an, uh, a casting director knows within the first 10 seconds whether or not they really want to continue listening to you. So you want to come out of the gate very strong. Right. I agree. Sheik, did you have a question? Yes, hi. It's Sheik. Nice to meet Shake, you. Sheik, nice to meet you, okay. Sheik. Uh, I just wanted to ask that... Uh, as a first timer college student, like what would be some tips and suggestions you would give uh, who's trying to get into the whole summer stock side of it? So some, I mean, the do's and don'ts I really appreciate. Is there anything you should look into, consider in terms of approaching it? Because I know the deadline started today, but some of my friends filmed their material and submitted it, but I just wanted to not rush into it. Sure be prepared before I do it, regardless right. of outcome. So yeah. Just... Right. That's a great question, Shake. And I would say, you know, you don't want to wait too late because, you know, if it's too late and they uh, there is a cutoff to a certain amount of people that, you know, the adjudicators can actually see because <laughs> before they, you know, keel over from video exhaustion. Um, so I wouldn't wait too late. But I think, you know, once you establish what it is you want to do, what you're, you do best, I would give myself, you know, a really good three or four days of really intense practice, you know, get an eye on it from someone else, make sure it's ready. And again, all those do's and don'ts I said to you, like make sure that that sound quality is good, whatever it is you're doing. Um, and then just, you know, I always, I always think it's attractive on a video when I can see confidence. I see a person who really wants to be there and is really enjoying what they're doing. Because if you're not enjoying it, we're not going to be enjoying it, right? That's like rule number one of any material you're doing. It's like, you got to love it. It doesn't matter if mom loves it, dad loves it, or your teacher loves it. Like, if you don't love it, don't do it, right? So I think just a nice poised confidence in the video and, like, just clearly a love of what you're doing really shines through to me. I don't know if Susie wants to add to that. Oh, I absolutely. Well said, Kevin. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Hope that helps.
Hi, do you have a question? You just popped on the screen, but your name's not up. Hi, yes, hi, yeah. Oh, no, I, I don't have a question. I came here for some information. I know I'm a little late. I just saw the link oh. um, uh, that was sent oh. to school. Uh, I go by Tuesday, by the way, just letting you know. <laughs> hi, Tuesday, nice to meet you. Um, uh, we were just sort of saying before you got here that uh, some of my big do's are that one, SETC is very clearly giving you the rules, so make sure you follow them, including don't go over 60 seconds because you'll be disqualified. Always check the sounds to make sure that what you're sending, you'd be surprised the number of videos I receive where there, people are singing but there's no sound coming out. Um, and to do what you do best Tuesday. Like, I mean, if you are a singer, that's your jam, use your 60 seconds to sing. If you're a really amazing actor, I would act. If you do both equally well, then you got a challenge ahead of you because you got to find a piece that grabs you quickly in both acting and singing. Mm. Those are my big, big, big points. Awesome. Trinity, did you have another question? Uh, no. Um, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to like go through my brain because I've, I've done uh, the screening auditions uh, and the, um, SETC audition in the various things for the past two years and then the job I got got canceled due to COVID so I really want to get another one um, so I'm just trying to go through and all match and stuff um I've been told to do it uh go horizontally, horizontally and that, is the, I that is the best way to do um video I right? do believe that is true yes okay. sometimes if you do it vertically it comes through like this and then we have mm -hmm. to like sort of look at you like this and, and nobody <laughs> wants to do that. So I think I'm going to write that down because I meant to say that from last week. Yep. So we should put that, that on the website. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Have you, have you all found the um, sort of the guidelines on the website? Have you all been able to see those and know where they are? Yes. Yeah. Great. I'm, I'm going to have more questions eventually. I just have to get my mind together, and I, next time I'll come with like uh, some written down questions as well. There's, there's no oh, pressure. Sure. There's no pressure at all. You're not. You're not being graded Tuesday. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> 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 Oh yeah. I just feel like I feel like there's probably a lot more questions in my head. I just had to go reach back for them. Yeah. So, no worries. We're going to do this well, again tomorrow night, and again Monday and Tuesday of next week. So, um, but if you're anything like me, like 10 minutes after we get off here, you're going to be like, oh, why didn't I right? ask that question? So, <laughs> so you, you will have other opportunities to pop back on and ask questions as well. Um, you know, I mean, I think I love the question about, you know, that Jim asked about sort of what kind of material to do. Because you do have to consider that, you know, these adjudicators are giving the daunting task of, you know, watching thousands and thousands of videos. So something that's going to stand out, something that's going to make them re uniquely remember you or is always the best, you know, or your take on, you know, a piece. You know, I always say to my students, we have to start with bringing ourselves to the material because we're all we got, right? I mean, this is my vessel. This is all I can do. You know, so what do I do best? What door opens easiest for me? You know, this is not the time in a 60 second video to show off your soprano if you're not a soprano or, you know, to try and hit those, those note, those tenor notes, boys, that you really, really want to hit, but like, they're not quite there in your lessons yet, right? Always sing a song that's comfortable within a range that, you know, every day I can get up to a G. So I'm going to pick a song that tops out at the G, you know, so it's not the time to stretch in a 60 second audition. <laughs> Hi, Trinity. Um kind of two questions uh i have heard like various yes you can and no you can't as to whether or not we can put things canceled due to covid on our resumes or not what is your opinion oh, so interesting that you asked me that because one of my freshmen just asked me that last week i don't know the answer to it my my answer to them was if you were in because they were mainly talking about their high school shows because they're you know we're seniors in high school mm -hmm. I think if you were really deep into the rehearsal process and in tech and the only thing you were really missing was the live performance, but you had already started creating character and been cast, I think in these times that's completely acceptable. Now, if you were cast in something and it never even started a rehearsal, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. But I think if you were well into the process before this horrible pandemic, you know, messed everything up, then I think 
I think you can put it on your resume because you did the work. That's my personal opinion. I don't know if you have a different opinion. Of I think, you know, certainly, um, yeah, if you, if you did the work, but I think also too, Trinity, um, you probably didn't even get into the rehearsal process. You got cast and contracted, yeah. right? Yeah, so, so I just, I, my thing is I kind of want to be, I want to be like, hi, so like, I got hired, but I didn't get to do oh, it. So saying. like, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, hi, I've yeah. been hired before by companies and I've gotten a bunch of offers. So like, yeah, that's, that's so. tricky because you actually didn't. Yeah. Damn you, COVID. Um, right? <laughs> I mean, like my first professional paying right. job. Yeah. Um, I would but, say probably you can't put that on your mm -hmm. resume, sadly, because yeah. it didn't actually happen, which sucks. Yeah. It's certainly something that I would, I would personally mention it when you're called back to, you know, <laughs> to tell your story. Well, here's my COVID story, you know. <laughs> I was hired to play blah, 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 or to do the season at blah, 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 and unfortunately mm -hmm. I wasn't able. And, you know, that's sort of an icebreaker in, in a callback situation as well. Yeah, I, I, my guess is you might, you might get different advice, uh, you know, from, mm -hmm. from others on that. But I think as long as it's clear on your resume that you were cast, cast, contracted, but did not start rehearsals, mm -hmm. you know, just so that it, it's clear. You might even want to put it in like a different section, like put your credits and then, you know, right under it with a little asterisk say, you know, was cast for blah, blah, blah's season canceled due to the pandemic or something. Thanks, guys. I always say the word of the year is fluidity, right? No one's, <laughs> no one's, this hasn't happened to anyone before. Like, not your teachers, <laughs> not your fellow students, not SATCs. Like, we're all sort of on the ship together trying to figure out, like, we got to be fluid. The rules are going to change. We can all definitely a bit. put adaptable on our resumes. So. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> Any more questions? We got, we had uh, Trey came, came in a little bit late. I recognize that background, Trey. Oh my God, that's SETC from last year, right? Yeah, it's the uh, Louisville Convention Center. Oh, it's such a great week. <laughs> Trey, do you have any questions or Dominic? Hi, Trey. Oh my goodness, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. Me too. No, um, so I'm a theater admin actually. Um, Oh, I was just I was just joining to listen and, and hear and maybe give some advice to our students. But yeah, I know it's a crazy time. Um, what 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 advice should we give our students that are, are planning to do virtual stuff? I mean, I think the biggest. Did you come in a little late too? It, it deserves repeating the, 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 the dues. Um, I, I think the two biggest pieces of advice are to follow the rules that have been set forth, and they've been very clear. SETC has done a great job. Thanks, Jim. Good to see you. Um, SETC has done a great job of putting the rules out there on their website. So make sure you follow those rules because if you can get disqualified if you don't, especially if your edited video goes over 60 seconds. So that's number one. And the number two most important rule is you would be surprised the number of videos we get where the sound doesn't work or the picture goes out halfway through. So make sure you're watching the entire thing and making sure the picture's on and we can hear you the entire time. And that doesn't mean that you have to spend millions of dollars to do it. You can get a great video on your phone or mobile device. Um, also, uh, oh, I, I know something else I didn't address, where to look. I don't think I'd stare straight into the camera. That's a little off-putting. You should just, just as if you're in an audition room, pretend like the camera is the, are the adjudicators and where would we look normally? We'd just look a little bit above their heads. So you can look a little bit above the camera or a little bit to the left or the right. Don't be giving me a lot of profile because then I'm going to be like, I can't see your face and I need to see your face, right? Uh, that's a good piece of advice. Um, and I was saying to them earlier, Trey, to make sure that all pieces are thorough. They have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Don't leave me hanging in the middle of a phrase. Anything else? Uh, yeah, I got a quick question. <clears throat> Hi, Dominic. Hello. Sorry, I, I was uh, I was listening intensely, uh, even though <laughs> I didn't say anything. Um, but um, <clears throat> I'm looking on the website, and it says state assignment. That just means where you live, like, um, like, in, like in Florida or in you know wherever. That just means, you know, where you live, right? Dominic, are you an undergraduate student, or are you out of school? No, I'm an undergrad student. Okay, it should be where you go to school. 
Okay. So if you go to school in Florida, you put down Florida, and it should be clear on the application that we're looking for where you go to school, not where your home address is. Okay. All right. Sweet. Thank you. Sure. So uh, I'm trying to, I did this last, I did the last, the last two years. So I'm trying to think of, you know, any other questions. I don't really have any questions. You know, I just want to get a job. But anyway. Yeah, no worries, no worries. We changed the database um, this year, the application portal. So it's going to look different this year than what, you're, what you've seen in the past, but hopefully it'll be easier for you. All right, cool. Thank you. Hey, Shake. To uh, clarify on the place where we live, so when we put where we go to school, it, it does versus where we live, is that, does that have a, like a deciding factor in terms of like the company's calling us back if they want us to do it no no okay they will they'll hire anybody that they are interested in and um uh, often you have to sort of make you know get make your own travel to the place that you get hired um and they'll and you know everybody has a different deal like they'll provide your housing or they'll give you a housing stipend or or they, and they might even give you a travel stipend or they might travel you. It's just, everybody's a little bit different, but it, it shouldn't affect the companies and, and who is interested in you. Thank you. Any Anything other questions? Else? Yeah, sorry, I just thought of another one. Um, oh, sure. If, if, uh, if you were in audition shoes, when would you like, obviously it's, you know, it's in a month, the deadline, when would like, obviously not doing it when it closes, when, because uh, someone was talking about like, when would be the ideal, uh, you know, don't wait too long, but when would you like, you know, ideally turn it in, you know what I mean? Well, I would say that we're, we're kind of telling people it's kind of first come first serve. So I wouldn't wait around too long. Um, because if we get up to 2,400 applications, we're probably going to have to cap it um, because of the way that we, because of, it's about percentages and the states and giving all the states a fair shot um, at people. So we're going to go up to about 2,400. So today was the first day and we got in about 200 applications today. Um, it's probably going to slow down, you know, a little bit. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait too long. I would start working on your audition and, and as Kevin said, earlier in this session, you know, really, you know, spend two, three, four days or however long really practicing and really getting yourself um, together and, and get it, get it taped and, and done. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't wait till November the 6th for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Well, yeah, uh, would sure. you wait for like the mid, like mid October probably, or like, is that, would you say that's even too late? Um, I would say mid October is probably okay. Okay. Yeah, right. I, 20, let's see, let's see, I think we're definitely going to, you know, it's going to peter off, you know, everybody was really anxious to get it in today, so, yep. um, I mean, at that rate, it'll be another 12 days, but I don't think we're going to see 200 a day, so, okay. I, I think you got a couple of weeks. Okay, cool, thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, appreciate it. Sure. Anybody else got questions? We covered a lot. It's a lot to think about, I know. <laughs> Great. Well, we're going to do this. We're going to do another one of these tomorrow at five, and we'll do um, others at Monday and Tuesday of next week. So if you all have questions, you want to come back and join us, or if you've got um, colleagues, you know, fellow um, uh, emerging artists that you want to refer here, um, just go ahead and tell them to come on. The, the um, Zoom link will be on the website. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so Susie. Really Absolutely. Helpful. Special thanks to Kevin. Thank you guys very, very Thank much. Thank you both so much. Thanks, thanks guys. Have a great Bye, day. Bye, y'all. Have a good night. Bye-bye.